guys, I heard that in your meeting today, you have to do a quiz during um, computers class sometime this week. So while I'm here with Pam and we're going to get her quiz set up, I thought I'd walk you through how to do yours just to save us some time, a little grief, and maybe one more tear or two. So when you're in your class and you want to give a quiz, you're going to go to the quizzes tab over here. And you'll notice that hers has this little like uh, no eye situation going on. We want to make sure that quizzes are available for students. Let me move my little bubble out of the way. So we're going to go to settings and sections. Nope, just kidding. Navigation, my bad. And then when we get to that, we want to make sure that quizzes are enabled and that the kids can see that. So we're going to move this up here like underneath discussions for the hay of it, right? And we're going to save that. So the kids can now see quizzes and you'll see over here, this little eye is still kind of giving us a hard time. And that's because we don't have any quizzes. So there's nothing there for them to see. Let's go fix it and put something in there. Save just in case and go to quizzes. So we're going to create a quiz. Of, what do you want to quiz them about? I'm going to quiz them about like the rules. That would be safe. Let's do that. Rules would be great. Okay, so we're going to set up a quiz. Canvas has two quiz engines. We're going to go with the classic because it's going to make it a little easier. And frankly, let's all just start with the easy one. So if you want, you can remember your choice for this course and you won't get this question again. It's totally up to you. We're going to submit. And now we're ready to name a quiz. So we're going to name this um, First Week Quiz. Well, let's make it fun since they're fifth graders. We'll call it First Week Pop Quiz. We're going to say um, in, our, in our instructions, answer the questions as best you can. Why not, right? Okay. Now we need to make some questions. So this is going to be a graded quiz. It's going to go into their assignments. And you can shuffle your answers. You can give a time limit. So like when I give my history test, they're going to have a time limit. It's not fair if Bobby at home has three hours to look up the answers, but um, Susie in class only has 45 minutes to try to remember the answer. So I'm going to set a 45 minute time limit on those. You probably won't use that in elementary, but you could if you really wanted to. You can also allow multiple attempts if it's something where you're just wanting the kids to get it one at a time. If you're wanting them to go a little slower, like if um, you're trying to modify, you can have it show one question at a time. They have to get one to get the other. So we can do that. And you can also let them see the correct answers or nope, sorry about you. Um, these two things, the quiz restrictions, are probably something you would use in high school. So I wouldn't worry about those for elementary. And we're going to assign it to everyone. And when do you have computers next, Pam? Thursday. Thursday. OK. So she's got computers on Thursday. We're going to make this be due on Thursday. And we're going to make it available tonight for those kids that are at home until Thursday. So they've got a little bit of time. They're going to have to figure this out. Now, our kids at home might not know how to do this. No sweat, man. Just give them a picture, right? You know, we're kind of all taking it one by one. So now we need to put some questions into our quiz. So we're going to come back up and go to questions. And you can do a new question group. You can find some questions. So this is where you might create question banks. Um, we don't have any, so we're going to create a new question. And let's say, let's create, what are we, we're fifth grade, right? So let's create a scenario. Let's say Bobby has taken his lunch to the cafeteria. And he realizes that he forgot his jacket. Classroom. He really needs that jacket for recess. What should we do next? And try. I don't teach try to go with it. So then down here we can put like ask an adult if he can go back to the classroom. That's going to be the answer we want them to give, right? Um, so get it. Uh, 
steal another kid's jacket? Or freeze today, remember his jacket tomorrow. Yes, that's really the kind of questions I give my students, by the way. So we're going to update question, and that's in here. So let's say, um, Sally really, really, and we can like all capitalize, we can bold, we can italicize, whatever. Has, oh wait. Has to go to the bathroom. Totally okay for if you leave the class without asking and run down the hall. Okay, let's give them some options. False. True. Um, yeah, let's just go true false. I was going to say true if she has to really vomit, but whatever. So, what do you want her to do? Do you want her to just leave the class because she has to pee? No, right? So there's your, your question. So you get kind of how to go in here and make some questions. Um, Pam and I, of course, are going to add a few more here along the way. But when you're done, you can choose to click Save or Save and Publish. We're going to go with Save because we're not done yet. So we only want to see it because we want to add more than two points to this quiz. We're going to come up with a few more. But if you were done with it, you would click publish and it would automatically publish it for your kids. So then when they go into computers class, Ms. Shari can say, log in, go to your reading classes and complete this assignment, take this quiz. Um, but that's pretty much it. Quizzes are pretty easy. The hardest part is going in and typing out everything. That is the most time consuming and annoying part, but it's not so bad. So, all right, if you have questions.